All right. Good to see you. Everybody come on in. There's more seating up front. There's seating in the back. We want to get everybody in here tonight. I do know that all of our uh, staff are not going to be here tonight. We have some that are sick, some that are out of town, some that are at funerals. Uh, we have some that is just really hard for them to drive at night. And some of you might be here and have that same problem. Let me tell you, as you get older, it just is a natural thing. So, uh, but uh, we're glad to have you tonight. Welcome, welcome to our staff, our volunteers. Uh, I guess I should really use the word volunteer. There's only a few what you would call, quote, staff members here at the church that are on staff. But uh, 95, 8% of our church is volunteers. And I appreciate you so very much. Uh, Sister Hunt is going to join me up here tonight, the First Lady of the Church, and we're just glad to see you and glad to see you here. Now, those that are not here, not getting out of hearing what's going on, we're recording it tonight, and uh, they're going to be a part of that a little later and take a look at it. But I want to open up with prayer this evening. Can we do that? And just ask God to touch. Heavenly Father, it's so good to be here tonight. It's so good to be here with our team, God. Thank you for New Caney Family Worship Center. Thank you for the people and the volunteers that make up this church, God. We are so excited to be here. We are so excited to serve and be a part of the kingdom of God. Lord, I just want to pray tonight, God, that you just will anoint our thought process. God, you will just anoint our hearts. You will charge our hearts to work for you uh, in even a greater way in the days to come. Lord, we know that we are living in the last days. We are living in the end time. And God, we need to be the best we can be for the kingdom of God. Lord, if there was ever a time, this is the time that we need as a church to put our best foot forward uh, into the world and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everybody that's out tonight. We give you praise in the name of the Lord. Amen. We're going to watch a video real quick. a stranger and you invited me in I was sick and you looked after me I needed a teacher and you inspired me I was lost and you prayed for me I was addicted, and you helped me break free. I needed a mentor, and you were there for me. I felt alone, and you showed me true community. You helped me experience the joy of worship. You made me feel welcome and safe. You gave me the strength to keep going. You led me to Jesus. just kind of hinge on some words that were just on the screen. We cannot do this alone. And uh, Sister Hunt and I knew that 34 years ago when we came to pastor here that this would not be a Andy and Lenore Hunt show or Andy and Lenore Hunt church that we would need uh, volunteers. We would need people like yourself to come alongside of us. Uh, we knew when we came here 34 years ago, you can't hire it all done. There's no way. Uh, there's not enough money for it, and I don't believe that's the way God set up the kingdom anyway. So uh, we are to be volunteers and to help and work, and so we just wanted to share that video with you tonight. I just want to say, and I'll let Lenore say something right after this, but I appreciate uh, each and every one of you. I look across the room tonight, and I almost hate to use this word, but it's God's word anyway, but 
the word diversity because diversity is being twisted in, in our uh, secular society right now uh, to, to not mean some good stuff. But I look at the diversity in this room tonight and look around with me. Now, I know we have some of our young children here. They're not on staff yet. They're in training. That's why they're here tonight. And, uh, but we do have a lot of our teenagers here that serve on staff and some of our young adults. And then you can look to the other end of the spectrum, and some of us are more seasoned in years. Can we just use those words tonight? Seasoned in years. But, uh, and then there's all the ages in the middle. So that's exciting for me. I, I don't know about you, Lenore, but that's very exciting for me. See, I, next door, they turn the mic on for me, and they just mute it when I'm not using it. They know I'm, I don't do that. So I definitely appreciate that. And one of the things that um, um, I appreciate about our church is that the, the spirit that we're seeing now of servanthood and servitude uh, that you have uh, began to see, um, one of the things I want to say, how much we do appreciate you. I thought when Pastor said, we will, we will turn the heat on for you, I thought, okay, well, we're going to splurge, thank you. And then he said, oh, and we're going to give you water, coffee, and cookies. I'm thinking, did that get those volunteers out? <laughs> yeah. So that is not a sign, any, either one of those two things, of our appreciation for you. I want you to know. So the, the, the store-bought cookies back there, and I think maybe Rhonda may have... Rhonda, Rhonda was appreciating y'all. So let's give Rhonda a hand clap. She baked you some cookies. Yeah. So um, she was showing your, our appreciation. But um, our appreciation is not shown that way. But our appreciation truly is from our heart. We do love and appreciate you so much. Before we move on, for the sake of any Dallas Cowboy fans here, I think we need to stop and pray. Uh, I'm just messing tonight. I hope they turn it around somehow uh, a few years from now. Amen? Uh, but anyway, I, I just uh, want to say thank you tonight. I want to spend a few moments uh, at the onset tonight of just talking to you about the NCFWC team, NCFWC, New Caney Family Worship Center team, and I want to talk about volunteering and, and what it is. Uh, you know, a lot of times in the church you get asked to do something. Uh, you get asked to do a job. You get, sometimes you feel like you get sucked in, don't you? And uh, how do you resist the pastor when he comes to you and asks you to do something? And uh, normally when I'm trying to build a staff, if I'm trying to help Angel get workers in the nursery, I don't let Angel call them. I let me call them. And uh, I have a pretty good success rate with that. So, uh, but, start yeah, yeah, well, I, I did the calling. So, but anyway, it, uh, it, I ha how can you say no to the pastor? So uh, I want to talk about volunteering tonight. And I want to talk about volunteering as part of God's plan and God's design. Uh, when you look in the Word of God, and let me give you some scripture tonight in Galatians 6.10. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially those who are of the household of faith. In 1 John 3.18, the Bible says, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and truth. I mean, no actions speak louder than words. That's very true. And as we serve in the kingdom of God, we have to serve with action. And then in Romans 12, verse 6 through 8, and I learned these scriptures years ago as a teenager, the Bible says we have different gifts. Oh, thank God. We don't all have the same gift here. We have different gifts according to the grace given to us, each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. Some of us are just great servers. Some of us just have that ministry of serving. Uh, if it is teaching, then teach. If it is encouraging, then give encouragement. Man, I know a few people in our church that are just wonderful encouragers. Some of us are horrible encouragers. You need to work on that. But there are others that are just wonderful encouragers. If that's what you're good at, do it. and Do it to the best of your ability. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. So Romans 12, 6 says, hey, we all have a job to do. We all have a part in the kingdom of God. Uh, do you know in the Bible that it tells us that there are some benefits to being a volunteer, benefits to working for God? Listen to this in Proverbs eleven twenty five: 
A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Let me ask you a question. When you do something in the kingdom, when you volunteer, doesn't it make you feel better? When you walk out of that class of teaching those kids, don't you feel just better? Don't you feel good about what you were able to do today? When you leave food bank, even though I know it gets crazy sometimes, I know this week it's going to be cold when we're there, but when you leave there, you feel like you really made a difference. Don't you feel different after you've taught a Bible study or you've watched the kids uh, in the nursery or, or you've uh, ministered in, in children's church time? Uh, there's just a, a sense of being refreshed that you have done something in the kingdom of God. It's a benefit. It says in Hebrews 6.10, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. God's not going to forget. You know what? When you work for God, uh, amen, you are laying up treasure in heaven. Hallelujah. You are laying up treasure in heaven that one day at the Bema seat of Christ will stand before the Lord and he'll reward us for what we did here on this earth. So don't ever think that what you're doing is insignificant here in the kingdom. Uh, it may not be a ministry or a job that is out front, but every part is significant and so important. In Matthew 5, 16, it says, In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So there are just some simple benefits to being a volunteer and working for God. You know what? I, I will never regret the work I put in for the Lord or what I've done for God. Well, Pastor Hunt, you were called. You're called also. We're also called. Uh, but I will never regret what I've done for God. I have some regrets in my life, but it's not about serving the Lord. It's not about what I've got to do for the Lord over the years and over the decades. Uh, I find that very rewarding. Uh, so volunteers, I want you to hear this statement. Volunteers are vital to a healthy church. You see, there's a lot of churches right now across the world and a lot across America, but, but not every church is healthy. Even larger churches can sometimes be unhealthy, but there are a lot of unhealthy churches. But what helps make a church healthy is good volunteerism. When people say, here I am, send me, Lord, or I'm willing to do whatever. You know, I'm willing to, uh, to make it happen. You know, um, a lot of you don't even know this, but before you arrive here on Sunday mornings, all kinds of stuff has already happened. The commodes have been checked. The toilet paper has been checked. I can tell you, the, the smell in the restrooms have been checked. Uh, the carpets have been vacuumed again because somebody in between cleaning them have walked on them again. Uh, the praise team has warmed up. The tech team is getting things in order. Uh, just th uh, a number of things are happening on the property even before we arrive, and that even happens on a Wednesday night. You know what? Youth pastor doesn't just show up in here. And, and, and everybody runs in at 645, including him and his staff, and they have youth service. No, they're, they're already, they've got it laid out. They're prepared. They, they're in meetings prior to that uh, even happening, and, and everything is orchestrated. The same with Brother Dylan and Sister Lexi over in Wednesday night kids' church as well as Sunday morning. So there's a lot that's happening and a lot that is uh, taking place, and, and I appreciate that. And there's so many pieces to the puzzle uh, that make, makes it work, and, and it causes us to be a healthy church. Amen. And to add to that, I just want to say the credibility of a church is built um, on its ability to create and maintain the environment around it, and the volunteer labor is the engine of that. Um, it doesn't matter how great pastor can preach. It doesn't matter how beautiful a facility we have, any of those type of things. If people come in and there's a disarray of things, whether it be about finding where their child would go to class and there'd be no teacher in the class or whether it be nobody to greet them or there's just confusion in the foyer, whatever it may be, the music's still warming up and the service, it's time to start and we start 15 minutes late and that type of thing, then all of these things matter. People take note of that um, as they are coming to see even the home folks take note of that. But people who are coming for the first time, that may be their last time. And so you count. You, you, are, you are 
what orchestrates and prepares and set up the whole atmosphere of what is going on on the property. And those of you who may not have a, a specific role in a service, but then you have sp other things that are going on, how you handle and how you set up those things, whether it be a, a class that you teach, whether it be a special event that takes place on the property, how you set those up, that, that is um, important to the reflection of Christ. Not just the reflection of New Caney Family Worship Center, it's the reflection of, of our example of Christ to the community and to other people. And we appreciate um, very much what you are doing for the kingdom. You're doing it for the kingdom is who you're doing it for. We receive the benefit of it. However, the kingdom is who you're doing it for. Lenore's talking about being prepared and being ready. And I, I remember as a, a young minister, we weren't pastoring yet, but we had gone to preach at a church on a Sunday night in winter. And it was probably January or February. It was extremely cold. And uh, I think the service uh, started at 6, and probably Lenore and I were there at 5.30. Nobody was there. And I'm telling you, at 5.58, Everybody pulled in, all four cars. Including the pastor. Yeah, including the pastor pulled in. They opened up the church. We started late. It, it was, was cold freezing inside, cold. Inside, no heat on. Yeah. When I preached, there was vapor coming out of my mouth as I preached. And uh, I'm sure I preached shorter that night and uh, had a quick altar service and we got out of there. But I thought, what a disgrace. What a mark against the kingdom of God. What a mark against God that we don't care any more than that uh, to be prepared and ready. So, so I want us to have the mentality. We always want to be ready. We always want to have things in order. Uh, does sometimes on a, a Sunday morning, does it, does it, do we get a flat tire? We get one, and we fix it and change it real quick. I mean, so we, we have those times that happen, but, but we, need to, we need to get more. There needs to be less of those times. And we need to be on top of it. And it takes all of us to make that happen and, and pull together. Uh, you know, the reason we volunteer is because of our love for Christ. That's why we serve. It's not because Pastor Hunt asked you or uh, this is what you like to do. We do it as an outward sign of our love for Jesus Christ. I accepted the call to the ministry because of my love for the Lord. And, and I wanted to do what he wanted me to do, but I wanted to give back and help those. Uh, sometimes, uh, as volunteers, you may wonder, is what I'm doing really making a difference? And I want to tell you, when you hear those words or start thinking that, that's the devil messing with you, okay? Is what I'm doing really making a difference? I want to tell you, it's definitely making a difference, even if everybody doesn't see it from the platform. Let me tell you, if you walk in this property and you pick up a piece of paper off the ground, it makes a difference. Somebody coming behind you, a visitor or whatever, will see that the property's clean and not just uh, scattered uh, with trash and different things like that. So uh, it definitely makes a difference. Volunteering at church is important because many roles are necessary each week to keep the church running smoothly. And church volunteer work also helps those in the community who suffer or have needs that they cannot meet themselves. I I'm, I'm so excited that we are an outreach church. I want to be a greater outreach church. We are not just parked here on these, these five acres uh, for us just to have a church here, call it New Caney Family Worship Center, where we can come and meet. We are parked here strategically by God uh, to minister to this community and to help this community uh, throughout the years that we are here and to serve this community. Uh, we do a lot of different things. Uh, we do do food bank. Food bank is big, let me tell you. And we minister to hundreds of families every month. And, uh, but we also go out and we minister. We have outreach. We have different things uh, where we go out into this community and uh, minister throughout the year. So uh, even when you link up and are a part of those uh, ministry volunteer opportunities, it's a wonderful thing. So why is volunteering at church important and what difference does it really make? Volunteering at church is vital for sustaining, as we said, a healthy church or a healthy ministry and fulfilling the mission to reach those around us. Without volunteers, and I'm just going to say this, and I believe this with all my heart, without volunteers, much of the work would go undone. I want to let you know, Sister Hunt and I can't handle it all. 
Brother Justin and Sister Angel, we can't handle it all. Uh, our, just the tiny staff we have here at the church, there's no way that you would get to enjoy the type of church you enjoy without each of you, and, and even those that are not here tonight. So it's very important. It's simply not possible or biblical, uh, nor should it be expected for the pastor and the staff members to meet all the needs uh, in or outside the church. The Bible encourages pastors to do what? Equip. Equip people uh, for ministry and train people to minister. So volunteering at the church is an excellent way for individuals to identify their gifts and develop a heart for serving others. That's what's so wonderful. That's what's so unique about a church. First off, we're described as a body, the body of Christ. A body has many different members. We know that. Look at your body tonight. You know that. Thank God you aren't all legs, right? Uh, thank God you aren't all fingers. Uh, but it, we're, we're a body, and we're a body that is fit together by, by the leading, I believe, of the Holy Spirit. And what I want to say, even in this room tonight, even though you are doing some things of God, I believe there's a lot of untapped resources right here in this room and even among our staff of things that you can do for the Lord. I want you to pray the prayer of Jabez. Lord, expand my borders. God, open up my borders. Let me step out into some, some uncomfortable areas uh, to do your will, which is very important. And so begin to pray that. Yes. I just want to add to what he's saying right there is, and I want to say this specifically to our youth as well as our young adults that are here that are, that are volunteering with us. Um, Pastor and I don't speak very much about what we did before we began pastoring. But I, I want you to know, we didn't just say, oh, wow, I think I want to pastor and then come, come here. Um, we, we were in church. And we were doing exactly what you're doing. We were volunteering in every area because it was just like this church. We, if we were, if you're breathing, we need you, you know. Uh, and so some of you have many different things because the pastor asked you, and you can't say no. Uh, and so you're learning to though, and then God's calling other people to step into the places that they should. So I want you to know to, these, to the young adults and to the teens, God may be using you in different areas to train you before this season so that in another season, those things that you are doing, we have taught Sunday school classes, we have worked in nurseries, we have been Sunday school superintendents, we have worked with the youth. Uh, we have worked with women. I don't know what else is he's taught. He's taught juniors. I, I, you know, um, it, and he had one of the largest Sunday school classes that we had in our church. And so we have worked in multiple areas. Uh, he helped mow grass. He's done whatever it was needed. That's what we did. And so then when God called him to preach, he was the, the sectional youth leader and then he worked with expos in our section, not the district. And our section was larger than our district expos at that time. So I'm just telling you, whatever God is calling you to do, do it, do it well. And then whatever else he moves you to do during that season, do it. Because you don't know what, how, where God's going to lead you to. Amen. And one thing that's really important is, is volunteers really help a pastor and a church out in the area of, of doing a lot of the work. Nobody likes to hear work, but in a lot of the ministry. And what that does, it frees up the pastor and the staff to really focus and concentrate on the, the vision and the direction of the church to help lead uh, in those areas. Uh, you know, it's pretty simple. The mission of the church is to do what? To reach people for the Lord Jesus Christ, period. Straight up and down, uh, that's what we want to do. We want to win people to the Lord. And we are commanded also to go to, to, to make disciples, to make disciples, to cause people to grow in the Lord. So we want to continue to do that. Now, volunteers, and I'm not going to be on this much longer, but volunteers help the church run smoothly. I want to tell you, I love the Sundays that it runs smoothly. And it wouldn't happen without you. That's how it happens, is when we pull together, when we pull together for, uh, for it to happen. For a church to be effective, uh, it does need a strong team of volunteers. That's why we're here tonight. 
I appreciate you being here. I really do. And a great crowd this evening, even though I knew of a lot uh, that were going to be out, but a great crowd. A lot has to happen each week at a church to run smoothly and provide education and ministries to those who attend. And we're not just busy on Sundays here. Do y'all know that? Do y'all know that? We're not just busy on Sundays here. We, we have a full slate on Sunday. We have our Hispanic congregation that comes in right after us. We turn the corner on Mondays, and, and sometimes well, we're always in the office, but sometimes in Mondays we have two women's Bible studies on Mondays. And uh, Monday night, the Hispanic Praise Team is here working. On Tuesdays, it's a busy day around here. Got a lot happening. And uh, sometimes even on Monday nights, uh, once a month, the uh, youth staff are having their monthly meeting. And uh, I'm just trying to think through our schedule. I'll help him out just a little bit. And also, we have volunteers who come and clean the church yes. generally on Tuesday. Monday. Tu Monday or Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. I know they come also on Tuesday because I know who some of them are. And so then um, also on Tuesdays, then um, at least twice a month, we have our adult worship team. And then we also have our teen team uh, is doing it at least several times a month, the same nights we are, and then maybe plus some. Then we have Celebrate Recovery. Yes, I'm working on that. On Celebrate Recovery is every Tuesday night. They start with dinner, and some of you are volunteering to give dinner. And then they have the volunteers who work with Celebrate Recovery. Then on Wednesday, we have church. And then on Thursday, and sometimes on Wednesday, almost every Wednesday, we get a food delivery uh, of some sort, just not always the biggest one. And then twice a month on Thursday, we have a food, bank, food, deliver, food distribution. Thursday night, Hispanic Church is back here. A grief share um, when it starts back. And then also we have prayer meeting in here. So for our, our intercessory prayer. And then on Friday night, many times that they have something. And then sometimes our youth have something. And then on Saturday mornings, they have intercessory prayer. So that's why we need our calendar. And that's why when you all want something, you all have to put it into the planning center so we can have you scheduled. What, so, what's exciting is ministry is going on all the time. It, and I love that. It is, because some churches open on Sunday, they have a service, they lock it up, and they don't come back until the next Sunday. What a waste of God's kingdom and his resources. But we would be in the same situation if we didn't have volunteers. That's right. Yeah, because yeah. I'm, I'm not here with Jessica when she's running Grief Share. She has a staff that works with her. Right. I'm right. not here in, in Angie and Janet's Bible studies. They won't let me in. It's for women. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, celebrate, celebrate recovery. recovery. I'm not here. Uh, Aaron and... Mike and all them, they're running that. I don't go to Hispanic church, so, uh, you know, that they won't let me in the youth service, uh, you know, something about age. And, uh, but anyway, so a lot is happening, a lot is going on. Let me say this tonight. I want you to hear it. I want you to let it sink in your heart. It's a compliment to you. Volunteers are the heroes of the church. Yeah, yeah. You really are. You're not getting, you're not getting paid here, <laughs> yeah. right? You're not getting a check here. And, but I want to tell you that the retirement plan is out of this world. Yeah. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus yeah. uh, one day. So even though much of the work is unseen, it's okay. The Bible says the, the, the fruit uh, that their work produces is much greater than the work of just a few. And so when everyone does a little, this is going to be one of our, our new catchphrases. When everyone does a little, it becomes a lot. Do you know together we can do so much Amen. for the kingdom of God? When everyone does a little, it becomes a lot. Practice that with me. When everyone does a little, it becomes, it becomes a, lot. a lot. Okay? So let's establish this. There are no unimportant jobs Amen. Without, within the church. It counts. Right. I don't know how you feel, but I think Ronnie's ministry of making coffee is so important. Amen. Amen. Ronnie might get to live next to Jesus when he gets there. <laughs> Jesus ain't going to let Ronnie drive in heaven because he drives like a crazy man. Amen. But uh, don't, don't, take, don't take his uh, driver's license away up there. Amen. We're going to float around up there. Hallelujah. We'll be in a new body. So, uh, so sometimes you may feel and the enemy may be speaking to you that what you're doing is, is not really important, but it is important. And I want you to know as your pastor, we value that and we appreciate that uh, so very much in everything that you do for a kingdom of God. There's just no way a church staff can do everything to keep the doors open. 
Volunteers at a church are essential. And the next time you walk by a volunteer, thank them. Amen. You walk by a greeter, say thank you for what you're doing. You yes. walk by someone that you know is a part of our greeters. safety team, say thank you so much. Our greeters, our different ones, our Sunday school teachers, all of them, are, are, are the people that work and volunteer with our children, with our, with our kids, with our babies, say thank you. Amen. Uh, most of us have raised kids, and we would have had kids if they're grown now, and if we were in church, in nurseries, or in children's church, and that was so much appreciated, right? You know, I, I grew up in small churches, and I remember coming up in churches where they must have not had children's church, because I, I spent the time under the pew, uh, amen, just uh, praying that I wouldn't get hit or stepped on, amen, in a Pentecostal church, and uh, that's the kind of churches I went to, so... Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm so thankful for the staff that we do have and uh, everything that you do and, and help make it make it happen. I'm going to move on. Go ahead, Lenore. Amen. While he's while he's looking for his next notes, I just want to add this. Um, first of all, have we figured out what year this is? Yes. Have you have we got, have we moved on into the next year? You know, it's 2024. Um, Proverbs 2024 says a person's steps are directed by the Lord. And I want to tell you, we thank the Lord that he has directed your steps to us. However it came about, we thank the Lord that he has directed your steps to us. And we believe as pastors, our steps are being ordered right now. We believe that for us to receive the things that we believe God has promised for this church, there are some things that we just have to get in order. And as a part of that, that's what we're working on. We're working on just trying to just be prepared and uh, be, be, have uh, some, some things that aren't maybe quite as um, uh, worked out for, for the receiving of what he wants to do. And we want to have all of our different departments. I want to say with regards to our departments, I am excited about our different department heads. Um, our new, uh, we have a, quite a few different staff members that are our department heads, and I thank you for, for the roles that you are taking. But I want to say to you, to each of you, whether you're over a department or whether you're working with the department or you're here tonight because you're thinking about becoming a volunteer, that in 2024, New Caney Family Worship Center, we want more of God. We want more of God's presence. We want more of God's anointing. We want more breakthrough. We're believing for more healings. We're believing for more miracles. We're believing for a spirit of excellence here at New Caney Family Worship Center. And we believe that's going to come through each one of you. We believe that you're going to join with us and be like-minded, that you're going to be in one mind and one accord with us. You're going to be in prayer with us as we join together, believing for these things to come to pass. Pastor. Amen. Let me give you a scripture in Matthew 25, 40. Jesus says, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Jesus came to serve people. By helping others, volunteers develop a deeper relationship with God and become more like Christ over time. So there is a wonderful benefit to serving the Lord. I want to stop for just a moment and give you a little input. I'd love to hear your input. And I just want to ask the question, uh, how does being a volunteer make you feel? I'd like you to tell me today. Raise your hand and I'll call on you. All right, obviously there's no feelings in this room at all. Daniel, okay, amen, I'm going to tell you what one of Daniel's jobs is, Nick's jobs too, they come in with Brother Ken Harper on Sunday morning and set this classroom up, and this is not a small classroom, this is what it's set up for the classroom that I teach on Sunday morning, so what a blessing, Brother Ken. Now, it, to me, it's, it's, it's I, I feel blessed to be able to, to do that, to set this up for people to come in here and hear the word. Amen. Yeah. You know, that's, that's right. we, have, we have, we, you know, I'm not trying to sound mean or anything or bad, but we have, we have a lot of seniors who mm -hmm. can't haul those over here, right. but they come in here 
to receive the word. Worship. Yeah. yeah. And, and just receive yeah. the word and, and knowing that they walk through that door with a smile, knowing they're going to have Ronnie's coffee, they got a place to sit down, yeah. and, and, and they're going to hear the pastor's word. Yeah. Yeah. God. yeah. Good. I like that. Karen, I think I saw your hand. I just like the word that comes to mind is I feel honored. Okay. All right. Me too. Yeah. How does it make you feel to volunteer? Yes, Rhonda. It makes me feel pretty good. I think the, the best part for me is on Monday morning when you walk in the door and you go, and it smells so good in here. Yeah, I do. Every Monday morning, I promise you I do because Rhonda's here early. Yeah. 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 Well, meet me in the morning, Rhonda, and I'll tell you, man, it smells so good in here. So, uh, hey, while we're talking about volunteers for cleaning, we really need to beef up that ministry. That's a ministry. We really do. Our church cleans it the first part of the week. The Hispanic church cleans it at the end of the week. So, hey, if you can help, male or female, we'd love to have you come and volunteer. Help us with that. Uh, it really does save the church a lot of money other than hiring a custodial company to come in uh, and do that. If you do that, you're looking at twenty grand a year, very easy. And uh, it's really, really a blessing, even financially, to the church. So I just want to let you know that. Uh, how do you feel? How does volunteering make you feel? Come on, you got to feel something. Heather. Okay. Yeah. You know, I think about that when I do food bank. I know my parents... We're blessed by food banks or churches when I was growing up as a kid. And to me, it's just feels good to be out there. That sense of, of fulfillment, that sense of serving the Lord. Anybody else before we move on? All right. We want to make sure that we finish on time tonight. I really want to keep you an hour, but hour and 15 at the most. And uh, I want to uh, just go over what uh, a few expectations that, that we have as you serve here on the New Caney Family Worship Center uh, uh, staff and the volunteer staff. First off, I want you to be faithful. I want you to be faithful in all areas. I want you to be faithful in attendance. When you're not going to be here, communicate with the pastor. Okay, let him know. That, that really, now, it really makes me feel good. However, when I get 12 calls in one morning, it, it worries me a little bit about what the crowd's going to look like. But I'm still very appreciative that you called me or you text me and you let me know. Let me add to that. When he says call him, uh, that means after you've called your department head, if you're teaching class that day or you're yes. supposed to be in nursery or something else, don't call him to tell him you're not going to teach your class. Call Miss Rhonda to tell her. Or don't call him to tell him you're not going to be in nursery. Let Miss Angel know. So he's not. he doesn't want to hear that call. He just wants to hear that you're not going to be here. Just text me. Don't call me, okay? <laughs> Amen. Uh, but yeah, we want to we want to we want to talk to our ministry leaders. That's so important. But faithfulness in all areas, faithfulness in your giving, faithfulness in your attendance. I believe as leaders, and that's what you are as a volunteer. You're to set the example. Yeah. Okay, is that good preaching? Am I preaching anything that's wrong? We're to we're to set the example, and we're to be leaders in every way and leaders uh, in every area. Another thing that I, I would I would really love to see is clear communication. All right. If, if for some reason you're not going to be here, that the call that Sister Hunt was talking about, you make, you communicate that, and uh, that we have some consistency. We do pretty good. Let me just say that. We do pretty good, uh, but we could be more consistent in some areas. Also, I wrote, don't abandon your post without communication. In other words, don't show up and not let us know. And we need to know that. And it's, it's very important that we have that communication. One thing that I wrote, that, that's very important. I think we should be on time. Excuse me. Let me rephrase that. I think you should be early. Okay? If you're supposed to be at your class at 930 on Sunday morning, teachers, you can't run in at 930. You got to get in earlier and make sure your classroom is set up. I promise you, so much happens on this property. You're going to walk in your class one Sunday morning. There's going to be trash all over the floor. The tables are going to be turned up against the wall and the chairs, and you're going to be missing some tables and chairs. Has it ever happened to you, Pat? Uh, your trash can's going to be full, so we don't always catch those things because so much is happening. Uh, but be on time, be early, so that you're not caught off guard 
by those things. So that's even if you're, uh, I know that Sister Jessica, when she runs Grief Share, that's set up. I mean, much of that's set up in advance. They run early uh, to make that happen. They're going to have guests coming in. We want to look like we've got things in order. Uh, when uh, Angie and Janet run the Bible studies, they're not just thrown together at the last minute. Uh, they're set up and they're ready to go. And as I talked about other ministries, the same way. So, so be on time, be early. If you're going to be late, be very quick to notify the person you need to notify. Okay? Very important. Hopefully, if you work a, the secular job you work, if you're running late, hopefully you notify your boss. If not, you probably won't be employed there much longer. Right? And so uh, we need you to be consistent enough that you are, uh, communicating well with us and letting us know. And I want to tell you, most of you do a wonderful job with that. You let me know, and I appreciate that so very much. But let's just do it all the way across the board, and let's make sure that we are uh, covering that. Uh, I'm going to turn it to Lenore now because she has some housekeeping stuff that we need to work on and make sure that we have in place uh, for the benefit of the church. Um some of the things that he was referring to is just things that just helps us. Uh, we just we want to have um, a spirit of excellency. Uh, that is not just for you; it's for us as well. We want to fix things that, um, if they're broken, we want to meaning some of our policies, some of our procedures, some of our communications as well. If we're not communicating properly, we want to get that fixed as well. And that's really what we're working on in 2024. Uh, from here to there, from there to here, just a complete spirit of excellency. Is that going to happen overnight? Uh, not completely, but we're working on it, um, trying to get everything um, just, um, and that's, that's how we started the end of 2023 when we had our meetings with, with each of the departments so that um, as we were speaking to each of you uh, as a department, and now we're speaking to our volunteers overall, so that, that is our desire um, to do that so that we are all on the same, same page. Um, and so I think that communication is vital. Um, and we will have more, um, whether it be like one, our, our different departments, meetings with the different departments and or with the leaders themselves so that we can continue to pour into you. You speak back to us things that you see, things that you have, suggestions that you may have. It's not just a dictatorship or just this or that. It's things that you can input to so that you can see. Because you're out there. Um, you, we don't see some things. And we need you to be able to tell us what you see um, here on the property or what works better in a certain area. And we're open to those suggestions. Now, what you have on your um, table that has been passed out, you're saying, well, I've been on staff for 20 years and I'm filling this out. Yes, you are. Your application may be 10 years old or it may be 15 years old already. And so I um, would like for everyone to complete this so that we have, this is our revised application. And She's yes, making me do it. Yes, I will. And so this you know. is so that we have a up-to-date information um, for everyone. It, uh, it does have a background check, and if you have not, if we have not did a background check on you, and you are a volunteer for us, we will be doing a background check for you in whatever area that you're in. Um, in most cases, in most cases, we're going to ask um, for our volunteers to do also. Miss Betty, how long did it take you to do that, that um, an hour Less than an hour? Okay. It takes less than an hour um, to do a, um, a very simple class. A anyone who does it, the class? Longer than an hour? Oh, two hours. But okay. But le let me say with, oh, Pastor wants me to lie to you. He said, tell him an hour. Tell him an hour. Well, that's kind of like he said this morning, it was going to be warm outside on Thursday, and now he's telling you it's cold. Yeah, I, he's got a man of split, split things happening over here, and I'm staying over here because I know what I'm expecting in 2024, So, uh, and I want it to come to pass. So um, it, we will cross that um, a little, little bit more later. However, 
uh, with our volunteers, in most cases, you're going to come into contact with children or you're going to be working with children. If your spouse is a teacher, um, then you will at some point in time probably be working in her class, be in her class or in his class. Uh, there could be a field trip. There could be lots of different things. And so um, if you are working in men's ministry, then there could be things that you're taking teens on or young men on or women's ministry. You could be too. So I'm giving these as an example. So I, we have to have some of these things in place already. I don't want to be saying you know, at the last minute and let's be trying to figure out who with the volunteers was. Um, so if we have everyone cleared, um, then we have that covered already. And we've had to do that with camp workers. All of a yes, sudden we were going to have scrambling. some of our volunteers go to camp and they've had to run through the process in, in order to do that. So Jessica? It, it, yes. Okay, and that's what I was about to say. If you have recently have did that class, you do not take that class again. So if those of you are thinking, oh, no, I'm going to have to take that. You do not have to take the class again. If you have filled out this paperwork, in the last two to three, if you filled out this paperwork, you don't have to do it again. Some of you have filled it out in the last month to two months. So if you have completed this paperwork and given it to me, you do not fill out this paperwork again. But what I do need is if you've not filled out this paperwork, I need one from everyone here that's a volunteer. So. It's really important. And let me, let me speak to you from the business side for just a moment the legal side for just a moment, the insurance side. We have insurance, uh, I was going to say insurance salesman. I guess that's what you are, but insurance, give me the right name, Jack. Agent, there we go. That's yes. the name I was looking for. Sitting in our midst tonight, but uh, we carry liability insurance. We carry all kinds of insurance. It costs us a lot of money for that, but our insurance companies want these files here. Right. And they, every, every, I needs to be dotted and every T needs to be crossed. And we just, we want to cr create a and safe environment right, also. Right. And, and we do have, we do have forms, but they're not like some of you, like I just said, some of you have filled out these forms and it's been years because you've been on staff for that long. Some of you, it's been a, some of you filled out a form. It was online. So we don't have consistency with the type of forms that you filled out. That stops. We now have consistency. I want, it will be this form, and then we'll be moving forward. Um, for those that are not here and for new volunteers, and then for those that are in, let me say this, so our department heads need to hear this. Um, for all of our department heads, if you, have, if you have need of a staff and or someone's talking to you about coming on, working on your staff, the first thing you need to say to them, you need to go get an application if you haven't already completed an application because you need to complete that and you need to turn it into Sister Hunt. They should not turn it into you because there's private information, personal information that you should not be responsible for and you should not be seeing. The only person that can turn that application in is really to me. They, they could turn it into him, but really it's to me only. And if you don't want it lost. No, I don't want it lost. Give it to Only her. to me, only to me. And so from that, from that, then the process begins. So do not tell someone they can be on your staff because that does not necessarily, if you have a suggestion to someone that you would like to be on their, your staff. Then the second thing I'd like to say is just because someone fills out a volunteer form, this is not necessarily for you, you're already on a staff, but if just because someone fills out a volunteer form, okay, perfect example, Pastor Justin, I'm gonna fill out a volunteer form. I'd like to work in One Way Youth Ministries. And so I just saw all these, you know, I think this is really a great thing, and I think that that would be a wonderful thing. Well, and then when I come to Pastor Justin, Pastor, if it just, actually Pastor wants to come into there because I'm the one who authorizes it and looks at it. And so if I approve them and just said, Pastor Justin, this is your person, he said, what? That's not the way it works. Hmm. You can give me some suggestions about where you would like to work, and once I see them, first of all, I may talk with pastor, and then we may make some suggestions back to you. And or then if there's some place that you would like and there's a department head, we will then go to that department head. Say, do you have space, Pastor Justin? Do you have any openings? 
So-and-so has said they'd like to work in your department. How do you feel about that? So we will go to the department heads first before we ever do anything else and talk with them. I just want to go back to something That's you said a while you're ago. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, ministry leaders, listen to me. Uh, don't try to build your own staffs. Do me a favor. Let's me and you talk first, okay? Because you'll put me in a real pickle. You might even put yourself in a real pickle. Uh, if you talk to somebody about serving with you and then for some reason they can't, uh, and then that, that could be a very difficult thing. We would not run into a problem like that very often, but we could run into a problem. Sometimes as pastor, and I'm not privy, privy, privy to share information, but I may know something you don't know. I may want somebody to work to attend the church a little longer before we actually place them in a certain area. The Bible says, and it's very important to know those who labor among you. I want to tell you, I've been guilty a few times over the years of placing somebody in a position before I actually knew them. And you know when I, well, you know when I learned them after I put them in the position. And, and sometimes that can be very difficult. So please, ministry leaders, I know you're desperate sometimes for help, but do me a favor. If, if somebody comes to your mind, come to me. Before you approach them, come to me. And I might say to you, you know what? I think that'd be a great fit. Why don't you talk to them and let's get an application from Sister Hunt and let them fill it out. Okay, fair enough. Does that sound good? Um, the other things that, so I do need these forms back whether it's tonight or within the week, uh, I do need these forms back. Again, if, you've already, if I've already did a background check recently or there's been one in the last, on the background checks, we would only do those every so many years. So if we've already have a background check and or if you've already did the training, uh, we already have those certificates for you. You do not have to do the training again. So I, I will let you know if you need to do either one of those two things. The only thing at this time that I need back from you is just the application and the form. By the way, on references, um, if you've been on staff a year or longer, you can just put pastor or myself. So if you've been on staff a year or longer, just put pastor or myself. Uh, if, you, if, you should, if you shouldn't be on staff by now after you've been here a year or longer, then shame on us. So the other thing I'd like to say is pastor wanted me to mention, our volunteers should be members of our church. And if for some reason you haven't joined our church, then um, we would like to ask you to please consider that. And if there's a reason why you don't or can't be a member of our church, then you need to see pastor because he needs he will be the one who um, authorizes that. We, if it's specifically about this, can you ask me later? Okay, thank you. Okay, the next thing I just want to, when we're getting close to ending this part, to our volunteers, I want to say to you, uh, again, thank you very much. But also I want to say to you, be diligent about being conscientious about certain things. Number one, ladies, know where your purses are at. Don't leave your purses out and open. Um, find, there should be a, whatever evening, whatever day, wherever you're, whatever, you know, whether it's Tuesday nights, secure them. Whether it's Sunday mornings, secure them. Prayer partners, secure them. Don't leave them on your pew. You said, are you kidding? I'm just going up there to pray. No, I'm not kidding. When I go to pray, I very discreetly just take my purse with me, and I set it on the other side, and it sits on the platform. Um, I don't make a big deal about it. I, that's where it sits. Why? Because I want what's in my purse to still be in my purse when I open my eyes. And it is what it is. Um, so I'm just telling you, if you've got your iPads and all this kind of equipment that you use during your, your, your times you're volunteering, when you get through with your, your class, make sure you've secured the mics, the iPads, the whatever it is that you use uh, in your area. The next thing is please make sure you've cleaned up after yourself. Yes, we do have volunteers that come in, but we don't know who's coming in before that. And they would really like not to have to clean up everything. They'd like for you to clean up after yourself. Uh, you got anything for that? Yeah, I just okay. want to say always make sure the room you have used is cleaned back up. Leave it better than you found it. Yeah. How about that? 
Leave it better than you found it, which is so very important. Another thing is always be willing to chip in. Uh, there's a lot of, I, I've noticed a lot of volunteers over the year, they're just, man, they're just always, they go down with the ship. And uh, they just always chip in, help us clear tables off, do whatever, sweep. But when we're having an event, that really is very helpful. Uh, and uh, that, that we reach out and we help with that. So, so always be mindful of that. We don't have a lot of fried chicken dinners. We used to, but we don't have a lot anymore. But we do have events at different times that it's pretty rough when it's three or four or five or even six people left to clean it all up, when it, it will take them 45 minutes, where if you had 15, they'd be done in 20. Right. You know, so it really does make a huge difference. Always have the mentality, what can I do? Amen. You done? No, I forgot something else you were going to Okay, say. well, it might come back in a second. Oh. Amen. Oh, go ahead. When we have fundraisers, if you set a table up for that fundraiser, don't leave it in the foyer when you leave. There's a church coming in after us, and we disrespect them. When we leave the Panera cart or the bread cart next door, and it's empty, unless we're going to leave them some bread, don't leave them a cart. When we leave them a table, that we've sold cakes on or we've sold something on and then we leave but leave an empty table, we disrespect the Hispanic church when they come in because the foyer doesn't look the way it did when we came in. So I'm asking you to please be courteous to the church that follows us so that their foyer is as welcoming as our foyer was when we come. I'm just asking for help with that. Um, the second part of that is and that's something we'll work on with the scheduling. When we're doing fundraisers, I know during the summer we just there was a there was a need um, in some of the departments. Um, we don't want to do fundraisers eat back to back on Sundays. So if if you're needing to have a fundraiser, you make sure you schedule it out because we we're, we can't do that to the congregation to where we're doing. Sunday, 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 out in the foyer, just for for uh, for specific things. Uh, calendar ministry leaders, listen, you need to get your stuff on your calendar. It's filling up fast. We have a lot of dates that we're adding this week. Uh, we've got some fa exciting stuff coming up in the church this year, and, and looking forward to what God is going to do uh, through just just some different uh, ministry events that we have. Here's how I want to end tonight. I want to end just. Well, you finish your two things then. Okay, two, two more things, and then I'm done. Okay, to the teens that are filling out the applications, um, they're, on your background check, you have a different background check than what the adults have. Uh, it's one that is signed off by your parents because you're a minor. And so you have to have a parent sign off to do a background check. If we were to run a background on you, we would have to have that. Um, and that's a key word, is if we were, then we would have to have a parent sign off on that. And I thought I'd left that form at home, and I just found it just a second ago. So I need um, to run copies of that. And or uh, most of you work under Pastor Justin. I can give him those copies, and he can hand them out to you tomorrow night. The second thing is I want to say, and this is important, and we're fixing to close with Pastor. Um, no child left alone for a minute anywhere. That means um, if you're responsible over here with them, we don't leave them alone. That means if you're up here working, you don't leave them alone. That means out there in that playground, don't leave your kids out there playing while you're in here working and you don't have an adult out there with them. There are all kinds of people who walk by here and we have no control. Um, people are walking up and down the streets. Plus, we are responsible. So whether it be you and your kid or whether it be you watching children, no child for one minute left alone without adult supervision. That's just a good plan. And uh, so we want to make sure that happens. Listen, want to take just a second. If anybody has a question at all, whatever it may be, a comment, I'll let you do it at this time, and then we're going to close. <laughs>